So what should these pastors be teaching? What should they be teaching? Bring it up. That's the key. Because remember, Christ said there are going to be many false prophets. Somebody might say we might be false prophets. But guess what? God identifies false prophets. Correct. So let's find out if we're the false prophets or we're the real prophets that God sent back here on this earth today. God ain't bringing sinners into his kingdom. He's bringing repentant Israelites who want to keep his law, statute, and commandments. Read. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. But the wages of sin is death. So the payment for committing sin is death. So when you hear that ignorant talk that, hey, we all sinners, guess what? You better speak for yourself. Because you what? You might be a sinner that's fine with living in sin. I am a commandment keeper that wants to keep God's commandments because I want the kingdom of heaven. Right. I want rulership of this earth. Right. Everyone is not living in sin. Everyone is not living in sin. Those who came, open up this Bible, start meditating, start walking in these laws, statutes, and commandments, they are walking in righteousness. And if our women don't change and come back to God, there's no way in the world they will enter into the kingdom. No. Hey, fornicators ain't getting in either. <laughs> hey, but hey, I'm going to give you something very simple than that. Because say it if a woman says, you know what, I ain't having sex. I'm going to wait on marriage. I'm going to show you a sin that our women are walking in and don't realize that they was taught this sin by their oppressors. Give me Deuteronomy 20, 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. He said a woman shouldn't wear that which pertaineth to a man. Man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. He said a man shouldn't put on a woman's garment. Look how sense. If you saw... If all these men was out here dressed in dresses, and preaching the Bible, you think we was crazy as hell. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So all they that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. So let's go to the top again. You women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what is something that women wear to pertain to men? Say again. Boxes. All right. What else? Watch this. If you was going into a bathroom, right, there's going to be signs up there. One for the men and one for the women. The one for the men, he's wearing pants. What are women wearing? So what are women wearing that pertain to men? No, what are women wearing that pertain to men? Pants. Pants. Wait. That is a custom that was taught by our enemies to wear pants. And here's another simple law that, we, that goes towards our dress code. Give me numbers 15 and 38. See, this, these things right here we bringing out, this is milk. This is, you know what? When you get children, guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to dress them. You know what I'm saying? They can't go by their clothes. You got to dress them, show them the right way how to dress so when they go out, they'll start carrying themselves in the right way. So guess what? When we go to church, Guess what? The pastor should be teaching our people, look, this is what God says is acceptable, and this is what's not acceptable. Right. But our people, you know what he said? You come as you are. If you came in a crackhead, you're going to leave a crackhead. Because he didn't tell you to repent. Right. He told you the law was done away with. So guess what? If the law was done away with, you could be a murderer, a rapist, a, a fornicator. You could do all those things. Bring it up. The law was done away with. But Christ didn't do away with the law because he came and died for our sins. He came and took away animal sacrifice. Right. That's what he took away. But the law still stands. Right. Here's a simple law that God gave us for a dress code. Read. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read out. Speak unto the children of Israel. As we know, the Bible is always speaking to the children of Israel. Right. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel. That's you right. You are the children of God. Right. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. He said, bid them. Bid means command. He said, make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Sis, do you know what a fringe is? Hey, if you look at on the bottom of all these men's shirts, these are fringes. This is what the so-called Native Americans were wearing on their clothes. Right. Fringes. This is how you know that they are also the children of God because they were keeping this law of God. Read. 
throughout their generations. So throughout their generations, that means forever. See what I'm saying? God say, I want you to do this forever. Not part time, not when you want to, forever. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So guess what? On the end of these fringes, what you see is a ribbon of blue. That's what you got to have upon all your fringes. Right. This is how you know when you say, when somebody say they know God, all you got to do is look down at them and see if they dress the way God said. Right. It ain't hard. So when he said, let your light shine before men, that light is God's law. Right. Right. That's the light. It's God's laws. So I should be able to see a child of God. I should be able to know if someone's uh, walking like Christ. Three. And it shall be upon you by friends that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of so, the Lord. So guess what? The purpose of wearing these fringes is that so you to remember to keep all the commandments of the Lord and what? And do them. And do them. Right. That's the whole purpose for us wearing fringes. So we can remember to keep God's laws and do them. Because, you know, if you was in the midst of thinking about fornicating, you know what? You can reach down and touch these fringes and say, you know what? I can't do that. Right. I can't do that wrong. Right. You know, I was thinking about stealing what? Man, I can't do that. Most high said, that shall not steal. Right. So we got, this is the purpose. This is the purpose behind everything God gives us. That's why he gave us wisdom and knowledge. No different than your parents giving you wisdom. Guess what? What greater wisdom can there be than the wisdom of God? So why would we ever turn the back on his wisdom? Our enemies love that. They thought, you know why? Through our disobedience came their salvation. Right. They rule over us. They got, think about it, they got like two or three hundred years of free labor out of us. Right. And became rich. Powerful, the most powerful nation on this earth. Right. Because why? Our disobedience towards the most high. So what do you think they uh, they want now? They hate that the prophets are back teaching our people the truth. That's right. They fear this thing. Because they know with us coming back, our rise is their fall. Right. Give me that Deuteronomy 21. Bring it out. With our rise is their fall. A nation only has two directions, up or down. Guess what? We've been at the bottom down for so long, we're afraid to rise. We don't want to rise without trying to drag our oppressor with us. Right. That's why they always ask us, what about the white man? Right. They want to drag the oppressor to the kingdom so he can still rule over us. Bring it up. They still want the oppressor to rule, up, rule over us in the kingdom. Right. They don't want the black Messiah. Right. They want that white fake Jesus that they done learned their whole life. Right. Free. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God said if we hearken diligently, meaning, hey, just listen up and do. Do what I'm telling you right now. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. No, no, no. We equal. Did it say we're going to set us above all nations? Read that. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of that, the earth. That's the promise. If you keep my laws and commandments, I'm going to set you above all the nations of the earth. Yes, right. So guess what? Your enemies don't want that. Right. The enemies don't came together with your oppressor and say, you know what? Keep them Negroes sinning. Right. I don't want them Negroes ruling over me. They hate your guts. They don't want you ruling over them. They want you at the bottom. They want you in these stores buying from them. Right. They want you eating their fried chicken and rice. Right. Or fried or fried cat and dog. Right. They want you eating that. They want you to stay at the bottom. Read. Read from the top again. And it shall come to pass if thou will hearken diligently. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. Right there, right there, stop. Our preachers, our pastors should be teaching us what God commanded. 
Because he said, I'm going to put you on high above all the nations of the earth. Yes. Right. right then and there, they, there should be no, point, no, no doubt what the pastors should be doing. They should be teaching us these laws, statutes, and commandments because we're supposed to be going to the top. We're yes, supposed to be coming out of these ghettos, out of these hoods, out of these prisons, right. and going back into leadership. Right. Period. Give me your uh, Malachi 2 and 7. Because the Bible says this is what we need to do to get in the leadership. Yeah. So what should these pastors be teaching? What should they be teaching? Yeah. That's the key. Because remember, Christ said there are going to be many false prophets. Somebody might say we might be false prophets. But guess what? God identifies false prophets. Yeah. Let's find out if we're the false prophets or we the real prophets that God sent back here on this earth today. Yeah. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7, says the Bible said the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So let's find out what knowledge the priest should be keeping. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the what? The law at his mouth. They're supposed to be seeking the law, statute, and commandments from the pastor's mouth. That's right. But the pastor told you the law is done away with. Right. The pastor told you, come as you are. He didn't want to teach you the law, statute, and commandments. He wanted to teach you prosperity. Right. Through, laws, uh, through God's law, statute, and commandments comes prosperity, right. comes salvation, right. comes rulership. Right. Through the breaking of God, uh, God's law comes death. Right. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So the true messengers of God teaches you the laws of God. That's right. The true prophets of God are back here on earth today. That's right. The true prophets of God is going to teach our people point blank period whether they want to hear or whether they want to forbear. Give me that in Ezekiel. Right up. We're going to teach it whether they like it or not. Because everybody they ain't going to like the fact that, hey, he's sitting here telling them what they're doing is wrong. They ain't going to like the fact that they got to change. Right. Our people is stubborn, stiff neck and rebellious. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, Verse 4, yeah. and he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So we ain't speaking our words. We coming out this Bible. The preacher will read one Bible verse and close the book and start preaching the whole two hours and yeah. singing songs. Read. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. He said, I didn't, didn't send you somewhere. They, hey, they don't understand English. I sent you to your own people. Read. Right. And I'm in hard language. But to the house of Israel. He said, I sent you to the house of Israel. Which are black to Spanish and Native American. Hey, you black to Spanish and Native Americans, listen up to the word of God. Because he's speaking to you. Read. Not too many people of a strange speech. And of a hard language. Whose words thou canst not understand. Read. Surely had I sent thee to them. They would have hearkened unto thee. He said, if I had to sent you to the Chinese, to the Japanese, and to the Africans, guess what? They would have listened. Right. But guess what? The Negro, hard-headed. Right. They don't want to listen to the word of God. They got something to do. They too busy. They want to get turned up. But the word of God, guess what? The only time they want to holler at God is when they get locked up. When they got that gun to their head. Right. That's the only time they want to hear the word of God. That's the only time they want to speak to God is when they in trouble. But God said, listen up to him right now this day. We, but the house of Israel would not hearken unto me. So when he said the house of Israel, you black to Spanish and Native Americans, he said, y'all won't hearken to him. And he's the man that gave you life. Right. God don't put you to death if you don't return back to him. Read. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. He said, I had strong against their faces. Hey, they want to buck up and come up against the prophets? Guess what? You ain't bringing no fear over this way. We're going to come out and teach this word, uh, word of God whether you want to hear it or not. Read. And thy forehead strong against their forehead. Read. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. He said, do what? Fear them not. So guess what? We don't have no fear when we teach the word of God. Right. Come down to verse 17. Verse 17. Read out. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. We are the watchmen of God. We are the prophets of God. Right. And God is telling us to come to you, black, the Spanish and Native Americans, and for you to listen up. Right. Hey, brother, you got a few minutes to hear the word of God. Hey, you got a few minutes to hear the word of God. 
We're going to show you how to get salvation, how to go in the rulership of this earth. Please. Therefore, here's the word at my mouth. Get warning from me. Guess what? We're going to give you warning from your mouth. Our people don't want to hear the warning that God has given them to give them life. Right. That's why I say our people don't love their children. They don't love their self. Right. They ain't got time to hear the word of God. They got to go in and get that cigarillo. Yo. They don't want no potato chips and drink. They really want to cigarillos, beer, look. That's right, it. Right. All they want to do is get turned up. That little money that the white man gave them, I'm burning a hole in their pocket. Right. They don't realize that the most high is going to burn a hole in their soul. Why? They walk in charcoal and don't even know it. Right. They don't even realize they walk in charcoal and don't know it. Because when that nuclear destruction come on them, they're going to know why they got burnt up. Right. Because they refuse to hear the word of God. They refuse to hearken back to him. Give me Proverbs 1 and 20. Right up. Our people got to know that, hey, you're walking in ignorance. You're walking in death. And the Most High is trying to save your life. Right. Hey, it's been, since, the, since this world began, the Most High has been sending his prophets out to save his people, to save his children. He don't want us to die. He wants us to live. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. Read up. Wisdom cries without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Guess what? Wisdom is crying out in these streets right now. Read. She cried in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones? God is saying, How long, ye simple ones? Read. Will ye love simplicity? God is saying, How long do you love to be simple? How long do you love to be stupid? That's what God is saying. Right. How long are you going to be stupid on this earth, running around being a servant to the white man when he created you to be gods on this earth? He said, how long are you going to run around being simple and stupid, not listening to the word of God? Read. And the scorners delight in scorning. They delight in their scorning. They delight in running their mouth. Talking about, man, them brothers don't know what they're talking about. We know. We are the prophets of the Most High God came to give you warning from God. That's right. And fools hate knowledge. Fools do what? Fools hate knowledge. You show what you are when you don't want to hear the word of God. Right. You show that you're a fool. You show that you ain't got wisdom. You show that you're ignorant. You show that you love death. And only a fool will love death. Read. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. He said he will pour out his spirit upon you. And guess what? Look around. The spirit of God has poured upon these men. Because we used to be in that same state. We used to be out here whoremongering, running the streets, selling drugs. Right. Hey, we was hating on our brother. We were doing the same thing. Right. We don't know how to love one another. Right. We don't understand that, hey, for us to change, we're going to have to turn back to God so we can learn what love is. We've never been taught love. Right. Never been taught love. Love ain't just an emotion. Love is an action. But we got to find out what is the love of God so we can show love to our brothers and sisters. That's right. In 1 John 5 and 3. Because that's the most important thing. When you hear our people say, hey, you got to have love, brother. You got to have love in your heart. But they don't want the love of God. They want that emotional feminine love. Right. That's the only love they want. That a feminine soft, soft love. That feminine soft love really is for their oppressors. Because that's all they do is bow down to the white man. Right. Read. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Read up. But this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So the love of God is to keep his commandments. Them same laws, statute commandments he gave for your wisdom. He said, if you love me, do that. Right. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. Guess what? His commandments are not grievous. So, sis. When you found out that law about pants, guess what? You should be able to go home and say, you know what? I need to put a dress on. All praises. All praises. Yeah. See, so that's what I'm talking about. We walking in righteousness. All you got to do is get you some fingers on. Because you know why? Because God said if you love him, keep these commandments. That's right. Keep these commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision 
The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.